Please place your palms together for silent meditation. Uh oh. Good morning, and thank you for joining us this morning for Lady Takeko Kujo Kisarage Memorial Service. My name is Lois Kashiwase, and at this time, please welcome Reverend Patty Oshta from the Sacramento Buddhist Church. She will be officiating today's service. We will begin today's service with opening meditation and nembutsu. Please join me in placing your palms together in gasho. Seiya, the lyrics written by Lady Takeko Kujo. How beautiful the starry sky, who could know the mystery of the heavens? When these countless eyes shine brilliantly, my heart is filled with joy. More numerous than the sands of the Ganges are the Buddhas. When I hear that they watch over us night and day, 
My heart is filled with peace. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Come on down somewhere. At this time, Reverend Patty will recite the Sambujo and the Hubakumon or dedication, followed by the chanting of the Jew Sege. Mandas and Mandas. Pujo me. Members of the Florin Buddhist Women's Association are gathered here today to observe our annual service for Lady Takeko Kujo. May the fragrance of the incense teach us the purity of our intentions. May the flowers offered remind us of the delicate truth of life's impermanence. And may the lights that burn brightly on the altar lead our thoughts to Amida's light of wisdom that dispels the darkness of selfishness. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. It's pretty similar to what we saw last week, Mom. Hmm? It's pretty similar to what we saw last week. Like, so what, there's no opening? There's not a lot. It's like a lot of speckhead. So you can't do the speckhead? Well, no, I, I don't want to start with that either. Can somebody yeah. mute themselves? Oh. 
しょうが、がおむりょこ、ふいだいせしゅ、ふさいしょびんぐ、せいふじょうしょうが、がしじょうぶつどみょうしょうちょうじぽくきょうみしょうもんせいふじょうしょうがりよくじんしょうねんじょうえしゅぼんぎょうしぐむじょうどいしょうてんにんしんちんにきえんだいこふしょうむさいどしょうじょうさんくみょうこさいしゅやくなんかいちえげんめしこもあんへいそくしょうあくどつだつぜんしゅもんこそじょうまんぞいよろじぽにちがつしゅじゅきてんこおんぷげんいしゅかいほうぞこせくどくをじょうだいしゅうちゅうせっぽししくくよいさいぶつぐそくしゅうとくをがんねしつじょうまんとくいさんがよにょぶつむげちつだつみふしょうがんがくえりとしさいしょうそんしがんやこかだいせのかんどこくしょうてにんとうちみょうけ「なまんだぶなまんだぶなまんだぶなまんだぶなまんだぶ」
At this time, we will listen to the Gatha Ahsoka Sono Sono. Kelly, the music is not coming through very well. Please join Peggy Okabayashi in reciting the Golden Chain 2. I am a link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love that stretches around the world. I must keep my link bright and strong. I will try to be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect who are weaker than myself. I will try to think pure and beautiful thoughts, to say pure and beautiful words, and to do pure and beautiful deeds, knowing that on what I do now depends not only my happiness or unhappiness, but also that of others. May every link in the Buddha's golden chain of love become bright and strong, and may we all attain perfect peace. Namwami Dabits. Namwami Dabits. Namwami Dabits. Namwami Dabits. Namwami Dabits. Her and Patty will now give her Dharma message. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our third Sunday of February. <clears throat> Today, 
We are observing a very special service for Lady Takeko Kujo, who was born in 1887. She was the daughter of Ko Son Otani, <clears throat> the 21st head of Honganji. Her public life began during the Russell Japanese War of 1905, 1904 to 1905, when she co-founded the Buddhist Women's Association, which was active in sending care packages to soldiers at the front and to helping families who had lost their sons in combat. In 1909, she entered into an arranged marriage with Baron Kujo Yoshimasa. She went to England, where her husband attended Cambridge University. She returned to Japan after one year, leaving her husband in London. The couple lived apart for most of their lives. After the 1923 Great Kanto earthquake, which devastated Tokyo and the surrounding Kanto region, Lady Kujo sponsored various humanitarian efforts, which led to the reconstruction of the Tsukiji Honganji Temple and the foundation of the Osoka Hospital, one of Japan's first modern medical centers. <clears throat> she was able to do all of this by organizing the women in the temples, laying the foundations for what would someday become worldwide BWA. Lady Kuja was also a noted poet and wrote numerous gathas uh, and poems about her Nembutsu faith. She wrote the beautiful gatha Seiya that Lois had read earlier this morning that we often hear at our services. We can see that although she lived over a hundred years ago, <clears throat> Lady Kujo had an independent spirit that was socially proactive. She was a spiritually grounded, independent woman who with all of her life's work, tried to make the world a kinder, better place. In all that I've read and heard about her, she found fulfillment and great happiness in helping others. Each of us here, whether we say it out loud or not, deep inside, every morning when we wake up, we all hope for happiness. We all want to be happy. In this way, we are just like Siddhartha, who became the Shakyamuni Buddha. As most of you know, it is said that Prince Siddhartha had wealth, a royal title, and, he, and every luxury he could possibly wish for. But still, he felt that something was missing. Still, deep, deep inside, he was not happy. Finally, at the age of 29, Siddhartha left his royal position, his inheritance, his family, and his luxurious life in search for happiness. He was looking for an understanding of life that would ring intuitively true. After six years of relentless searching, it is said that on the morning of December 8th, while in meditation under the Bodhi tree, Siddhartha awakened to what we call the Dharma, undeniable truth. This all began with his search for happiness. Shinran Shonin also was a seeker of truth. <clears throat> Shinran too was looking for his happiness. After 20 years of rigorous practice on Mount Hiei, he felt that he was no closer to awakening when he began. Shinran left Mount Hiei and encountered his teacher, Honen Shonin. Honen would help Shinran awaken to his life and his happiness. Each day, we are making decisions, large and small, that direct the course of our lives. For students in high school and in college, from now especially, they will be making life-shaping decisions that will create the life that they will live. Some of these choices may seem absolutely inconsequential, inconse but I found that just one small decision may change the course of our whole life. That is why it is most important that when faced with choices, we have our Dharma eyes open and we choose wisely. But I have sometimes asked myself, how do we find true happiness? 
What is the seed of happiness that grows into the fulfillment in life? Yeah. Is it finding that special someone who makes our lives special? Is it winning lotto or hitting the jackpot in Reno? Is it finding a meaningful career or can it be simply being with family, enjoying each day together? What is happiness? I read an article in a newspaper a few years ago. For three years, Gallup called a thousand random selected American adults each day and asked them about their emotional status, work satisfaction, eating habits, illnesses, stress levels, and, and other indicators of their quality of life. It was part of an effort to measure the component of the good life. The responses were plugged into a formula called the Gallup Healthways Wellbeing Index, and then they were sorted by geographic area and demographic criteria. The New York Times asked Gallup to come up with a statistical composition for the happiest person in America based on the characteristics that most co closely correlated with the happiness in the year of 2010. Men, for example, tended to be happier than women. Older people were happier than middle-aged people and so on. After randomly interviewing 1,095,000 people, Gallup selected a man by the name of Alvin Wong. He's a five foot 10, 69 year old Chinese American he adopted his wife's religion and is a kosher observing Jew. They have children and live in Honolulu. He runs his own healthcare management business and has a comfortable income. When asked what is the secret to his happiness, he replied that my mom was always a believer in you don't do things just for money. You do things because you want to do them. You love to do them. This is what's going to make you get up in the morning and want to do things. And you're going to go to work happy. He added, if you can't laugh at yourself, then life is going to be very hard on you. I get up in the morning and say, I'm very fortunate. I'm living in Hawaii doing what I want to do. Mr. Wong also stated that there are always tough times you get through it by realizing it happens, laughing at the situation and finding a way to fix it. I live my whole life with humor in it. So whatever Mr. Wong was doing, he was doing something right. I think many people, especially young, felt that money or having the newest stuff like the new iPhone or maybe being with the most popular person at school would make us happy. But as Buddhism teaches us, even if we are lucky to have wealth and fame and popularity, we will never be satisfied. We will always want more. We think that having more will make us happier. But the Buddha almost 2,600 years ago that is not the way. The Buddhist philosopher Daisaku Ikeda once said, what is the purpose of life? The answer is to become happy. Whatever country or society people live in, they all have the same deep desire to become happy. Yet there are few ideas as difficult to grasp as that of happiness. In our daily life, we are constantly experiencing happiness and unhappiness, but we are still quite ignorant as to what happiness really is. Daisuku Ikeda went on to talk about a friend of his. She once spent a long time trying to work out what happiness might be, particularly happiness for women. When she first thought about happiness, she saw it as a matter of becoming financially secure or getting married. The view in Japan society then 
was that happiness for a woman was only to be found in marriage. But looking at friends who were married, she realized that marriage didn't necessarily guarantee happiness. Gradually, she realized that the secret of happiness laid in building an inner self that can absorb the inevitable trials and hardships that we have to know in living life. She saw that happiness does not come simply from a good formal education, from wealth, or from marriage. She found that real happiness does not come from outside of us. It comes from within. She finally told him, now I can say with confidence that happiness doesn't exist in the past or in the future. It only exists within our state of life right now, here in the present, as we face the challenges of daily life. Happiness is not a life without problems, but rather the strength to live through the problems that come our way. There is no such thing as a problem-free life. Dif difficulties are unavoidable. But how we experience and react to our problems depend on us. Let me say that again. Happiness is not being able to have a life without problems. Instead, it is having the strength to live through the problems that will inevitably come our way. There is no such thing as a problem-free life. Difficulties are not just unavoidable. Difficulties are a part of every life. But how we experience and react to life's difficulties depend on us. Daisaku Ikeda continued to say, the Buddhism teaches us that we are each responsible for our own happiness and or unhappiness. The challenges we face in life can be compared to a tall mountain rising before a mountain climber. For someone who has not trained properly, those muscles and reflexes are weak and slow. Every inch of the climb will be filled with apprehension. And when the climb becomes difficult, we may find ourselves filled with terror and maybe even pain. The exact same climb, however, will be a thrilling journey for someone who is prepared, someone whose legs and arms have been strengthened by constant training. With each step forward and up, beautiful new views can come into sight. Understanding that happiness comes from within, we should live not comparing ourselves or our lives with others. Instead, we should live comparing who we are today against who we were yesterday and who we are today against who we will be tomorrow. While this may seem simple and obvious, true happiness is found in a life of constantly improving ourselves, becoming better human beings. And as we train ourselves to live through life's adversities and challenges, we may find that the same worries that could have made us miserable can actually be a source of growth. We need only to approach them with courage and wisdom. And we need to really look at our lives with our Dharma eyes open. Finding happiness in life is what each of us wants. To have a happy life has always been every parent's greatest and deepest wish for their children. It has been the deepest wish that all of our parents have had for each of us. Although our parents may be gone, we know in our hearts that this would be their wish. Know that the decisions we make each and every day, the decisions we make, both large and small, are the source for our happiness, for our one and only life. We need only to make these decisions with our Dharma eyes open. And when we feel our lives fulfilled and happy, our parents' deepest wishes will be fulfilled. As we gather today to remember the life of Lady Takeko Kujo, let her be our example to do the best we can to live a fulfilled, happy, 
and meaningful life. Thank you again for coming to today's service. In closing, please join me in gusho. While this may seem simple and obvious, true happiness is found in a life of constantly improving ourselves, becoming better human beings. And as we train ourselves to live through life's adversities and challenges, we may find that the same worries that could have made us miserable can actually be a source of growth. We need only to approach them with courage and wisdom. We need to really look at our lives with our Dharma eyes open. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Please join me in the recitation of Three Treasures One. Hard is it to be born into human life. Now we are living it. Difficult is it to hear the teachings of the Blessed One. Now we hear it. If we do not realize the truth in this life, when will it be realized? Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I take refuge in the Buddha. May we absorb ourselves in the principle of the way to enlightenment and awaken in ourselves the supreme will. I take refuge in the Dharma. May we be submerged in the depth of the doctrine and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. I take refuge in the Sangha. May we live in harmony in the great assembly as disciples of Buddha and be freed from all hindrances, becoming units of true accord in the life of harmony in a spirit of universal oneness, free from the bondage of selfishness. Even through myriad ages of kalpas, hard is it to hear such an excellent, profound, and wonderful doctrine. Now we are able to hear and receive it. Let us thoroughly understand the true meaning of Tathagata's teaching. Namo Amidavatsu. Namo Amidavatsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Thank you, Reverend Patty, for your Dharma message. We will, we will close today's service with meditation in Nembutsu. Please join me in placing your palms together in Gosho. Um, the Practice of Charity. This is an essay from Leaves of My Heart by Lady Take Kokujo. Oscar Wilder once said, to live, is the, to live is the rarest thing in the world. Everyone needs food, clothing, and shelter, but it is difficult to live as one might desire. That is rare indeed. For this reason, the many charitable projects that simply provide food, clothing, and shelter for the poor are causing them to be satisfied with the bare minimum. True charity involves revealing the real meaning of life. However much we might want to reform our way of life or cultivate a change in ourselves, without a truly religious experience, it will all come to naught. Thus, however, many charities there might be if they do not provide spiritual guidance as well, there will never be enough of them to help the people in need. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Okay. At this time, um, we'll have announcement. And if somebody has an announcement to share with the Sangha, please unmute. I, I have a list. Okay. The next service is Sunday, March 6th, and it's our Spring Ohigan and March uh, Shotsuki Memorial Service at 1030 uh, via Zoom. And then the next service will be Sunday, April 10th, it's the Hanamatsuri and April Shotsuki Memorial Service 
at 11 o'clock. And this will be an in-person service and it will be held in the YBA hall. Uh, following the service, the temple will be barely, the, following the service, the temple time capsule will be buried. Um, it is important to RSVP for this uh, service because you have to RSVP for your seating and for a complimentary Obento box by March 19th. Uh, please refer to the letter in the oneness and in the e-blast. Next thing I have is the B BCA National Council is inviting all the members of the temples to attend the open, what they call open to the public, workshops and BCA Itaikyo service on Zoom during the National Council meeting. The workshops are on excuse me, Saturday, March 5th, and the um, Itaiko, BCA Itaiko service is on March 13th at 10 a.m. So please refer to the times and links for these um, workshops and the Itaiko on the, there was an email blast that was sent out on February 18th, so check your email. A fundraiser, a Locomoco drive through fundraiser is March 19th. Orders are due March 10th and need to be mailed to Eric Fuji's home address. Info is on the Oneness and on the church website. The next church, let's see, the next gift card fundraiser order is due March 6th. Please contact Ann Tsukamoto. Um, the temple is considering starting a minister's assistant lay assistant program under the guidance of Reverend uh, Matt Hamasaki and Reverend Patty Orsta. So if you're in interested or curious about the program, please contact Peggy Okabayashi. We encourage everyone to participate. And the BCA, BCF, excuse me, 2022 membership uh, dues are now payable. The membership forms are, they were in the uh, February oneness and also on the website. Thank you. In closing today's service, I would like to thank Reverend Patty Orsta and our golden chain reader, Peggy Okabayashi for today's service. And special thank you to Kelly Gortman and um, Stuart Ito, our Zoom technicians. Thank you for attending today's Lady Takekokujo Kisarage Memorial Service. Have a nice weekend. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Oh, Reverend Bob, thank you. I just saw your hand. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 thank you. See you soon. <laughs>